أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Today inshallah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, Today inshallah we'll discuss some of the themes from chapter 95 from the glorious Quran سورة التين The Fig Now angels are created with a mind and they don't have any desires Animals are created with desires and have no mind. But man is a unique creature. He is created with both a mind and desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man in the best forms and gave him the choice to be in the in a rank above the angels or to fall lower than animals. So when man's mind overcomes his desires, he rises to levels above the angels. When his mind is under the control of his desires, he, f- he falls to below animals. And this chapter affirms that man can achieve the highest ranks only when he knows Allah, obey Him, and do good deeds. He can also plummet to the lowest ranks with misguidance and disobedience. So if we take a look at, uh, at the verses, by the fig and the olive and Mount Sinai and this safe land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath with some of his great creation to bring an important topic to our attention. Now the name of the surah, Surah Atin, was taken from the mention of fig in the, in the first verse and is taken as, as the name for the surah. <clears throat> Now, you can take those verses, normally they're interpreted in two different ways. The first meaning is, in the most general interpretation of the verses, is that fig and olives are among Allah's creation that are nutritious and beneficial to man. They grow on mountains in stages, growing from seeds to full trees. This is the nature of Allah's creation to develop in stages, and man is no difference. One does not feel safe flying in the air or in the sea, but feels perfectly safe on land. So the safe land could be any land where all of man's necessities are available as provisions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can take those verses to mean that in the general sense. Or the other meaning is the safe land is interpreted as Mecca, a land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it the highest status. And the Mount is uh, Mount Sinai is where Moses received guidance from Allah. Then if you take those two, then the fig and the olives must point to a place as well. And in this case, it could be Jerusalem and the Holy Land of Palestine. That's where fig and olives are, you know, grow. So these three places are the holiest places on earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using to make a very important point. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ in, ver- in verses 4 and 5. We created man in the best design, then reduced him to the lowest of the low. The creation of man is mind-boggling, if we contemplate it. It is the best design created by Almighty Allah. The involuntary functions of the body, like breathing and the beating of the heart, are a great, de- great design. Man would die if he falls asleep otherwise. If we were put in charge of taking, of thinking about taking every breath and every involuntary action, we will die. The body is proportional to man's needs, vision, hearing, senses, and the mind. And the mind is which is Allah's greatest bounty on man. The ability to think, to deduce, to invent are all possible because of this gift from Allah ta'ala. The innate nature, the fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled in man drives him to be the best he can be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man to be the best of creation and to reach the highest ranks when he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and comes closer to him with obedience and good deeds. Doing so will elevate man above the angels because angels obey but they have no choice in the matter. But man has a choice. He can obey and he cannot obey. And when he chooses to go against his desires and to prefer what Allah ordered, then that's how you you rise in the ranks. 
But if man strays away from Allah's guidance, he will fall to the lowest rank below animals. Sin and disobedience transform man from an honored being to a despised one, where he behaves in such terrible ways that animals don't even do that. But Allah is making an exception in verse 6. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرٌ مَمْنُونَ Except those who believe and do righteous deeds, for them is a reward without end. So the ones excluded from falling to the lowest rank are the believers who affirm their belief with deeds that Allah likes and approves of. Good things in life end with death. They are not fit to be a grant from Allah. When Allah says, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرٌ مَمْنُونَ They have a great reward that never ends. He's not talking about this life. Allah's grants extend beyond death and last forever. For such believers is the highest ranks and a reward that lasts forever. No fear, no sickness, no worries, no weakness, no humiliation, only ever-increasing contentment that never changes or ends. That's what those believers have to look forward to. Allah says, فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ So why do you still reject the religion? A smart person prepares for this reward in this lifetime. The loser will reject the signs of Allah and follow his desires for a fleeting moment, for, for the enjoyment of 50, 60, 100, 120 years. He, he, he forsakes an eternity of enjoyment for a, this temporary time that we have on this earth. Rejection can be with words or with actions, which is more subtle. Disobeying Allah's orders is a form of rejecting the religion, even if one you know, professes to be a believer. When you do not submit to the will of Allah, then you are rejecting. So, Allah's signs in creation are clear, and they point to a great Lord who exists, He knows all details, and He will take account. So, it is a serious question for man. What holds you back from believing and taking Allah's promises and threats seriously? How can you ignore them and insist on misguidance? Alayhi sallahu bi ahkam al the last the last verse in the chapter. Is Allah not the wisest of the wise? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to read the surah and reply, Yes, bala. Yes, Allah. Yes, O Allah, you are the wisest of the wise. And everything that you have in your book is for man's benefit is the best course of action for man. So Allah's wisdom is above all his creation and evident in everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man in the best image and design. He created him to think, to choose, to speak, to hear, to contemplate. He gave him wisdom and distinction from all other creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave man a share of some of his beautiful attributes as an honor from him. Allah is one, and He made every person unique in many ways. Your fingerprints, your voice, your DNA, your retina, your scent, and, and so on. You are unique in, you know, in, in some aspects. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, and He made man able to hear and comprehend. Allah is all seeing, and He made man able to see. He is the compassionate, the merciful, and He gave man a share of those, of those attributes. So the honored among mankind will mimic Allah's attributes that he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to possess. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reached the highest ranks man can ever reach by perfecting his human nature and molding it according to Allah's instructions. He is the example to follow to achieve the highest ranks. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.